Frank Exler and another person come in and look at it. And the cheapest that they got was eighteen to twenty thousand dollars, which is our annual budget. So and it is, I think, probably recommended that we put up signs, do not lean, do not touch, because some of those posts are really, really bad. Um, obviously, if we get grant money, it won't be till next spring that the work gets done. Right, and then they'll, they'll, they'll do the bidding and they will work right. that kind of thing. So I am requesting from Virtual Borough Council that they support us in this effort to obtain these funds to work with with the borough and do it for us. Um, it's a well-used sidewalk, believe me. People come and go there. And people come and go there at night, too, which is why we do not hold meetings here at night anymore. But, uh, yeah, we do request borough support. Do you have any motion for that? Yeah, no. That's all. Okay. Are you afraid for your life, Mary? Is that why you want to are you afraid of your life? Is that why you'll be there? Now, I, I was afraid there today in the middle well, of the afternoon of at the man uh, walking around saying, Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you. Come to see us. Eric Schmidt, please. I just uh, we spent a lot of time in the parks the last couple of months and uh, that's a few maintenance things. Um, I've been at uh, school and the, there's two different play play uh, play gym type of Where you going for um, the play gym part of the back and the bottom? Yeah, with the plywood. We just got the parks in there for $1,700. All right, cool. And the public works department is getting ready to go. Yeah, I was just wondering if anybody did let the pipe look like it was starting to start wear out. Yeah, we, we had to have the, the uh, representative for the play equipment come in and take a look to see what parts yeah. we needed. And then there's also a piece missing where you have the letters or animals yeah. or whatever that you put their heads through. We got that too. So okay. they'll be replacing it. Uh, the other uh, two minor things I noticed uh, the pavilion, I don't know if the roof's leaking yet. But the shingles are in rough shape on the uh, pavilion in the school. Yeah, just going to place those shingles a couple years ago. Uh, looks like uh, nobody, the overhead probably wasn't quite enough on that side. So the water started to damage the water a little bit. And uh, down in the shelters, maybe take a look at the picnic tables down there. They're kind of in rough, rough shape. It looks like you know, it might be a safety issue in the future. Uh, it's from a block block, right? Yeah, it has not been finalized yet. We're still looking, waiting to get approval from the federal government because it's a land of <coughs> conservation. The funding pool of money that's going to provide it. So, no, we can't just do it. No, we have to do exactly what that says. We got the grant, we just haven't gotten the contracts. Yet, so we can't move forward. They don't want us to start anything until after September and bid it for the spring anyway. So. We'll, we'll take a moment. Yeah, I know it's the picnic table by the little kids' play area by the the right ball field. I, I actually think I had a picture of it and uh, we're about to tell the guys to yeah. take a look at it. So I can remember one that somebody sent me a picture of that. Issue. All right, that's it. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Bob Frog. Uh, I just have a couple things I want to ask you guys about. Uh, the widening of Chartier Street, adding that one lane from the rural when it was done, uh, I think I recall hearing that the cost of that was $400,000. What I wanted to ask is, has, have you guys or has Lori and Joe made an approach to Upper St. Clair and maybe Bethel Park by helping to pay for that. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. And they've said no. Well, we, haven't, we haven't asked Bethel Park. Upper 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 Upper
and it doesn't even determine the fact that 75% of those consuming those people are from Upper St. Clair and Buffalo Park and can take it to a higher level. What do you think? You, 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 get, a, you, you get a bunch of kids. If you have five kids there, they can each interview each car. All they, all they do is ask them to their home. Don't give up. That's, that's no, still, really that's still 200 grand. Up. I'm just saying, that's I mean, 200 grand you might be able to get. That's what we, that's where we have asked them. They were, we have asked them. They were asked by the task force. Oh, well, yeah. all the time. They're always <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they were asked by the task force and the federal offices yeah. what they were going to contribute. Yeah, I mean, they, they said zero, right? They said this time we're not going to do any financial contribution. Well, the, the one that you suggested, I don't know why it might be done. See what they say then. You know, well, I know, I make it, make it extra. Yes, yes. Is that, so is that a formal yes. reply? Yes. Yeah. So there's a letter now for that? There's a formal, that was a formal reply from Adam Benjini um, via Matt Sarakowski, and I'm sure we can get a letter to Yeah, I'd like to see a copy of this. <coughs> I don't know that we, I, I'm not asking for a letter. I was asking if something had changed since the task force meeting where there was some formality to it. And we got the, you know, some good response at the meeting. No, at the task force meeting, it's, it's, we had a meeting inside the head and they right. sent a representative. He couldn't commit, if he couldn't comment or be able to go back to Upper St. Clair. Mm -hmm. And then when we went to the meeting, we had to depend on the official. And all the stakeholders, public and private, and interested parties that have been at those meetings, you can glean the universe of those who have contributed and those who have not, because there is document, you know, there is document, the, the tally of those public and private. In other words, they know how much Bridgewell's contribution and commitment is, they know how much saw fed since they know how much new berries is. Yes. So you can do the math and you can see the list. Oh, I'll check that out. But uh, I, 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 I wouldn't give it up I can buff on that because I think we have a, a big argument to uh, I agree. Uh, related to that, yes. uh, I showed you this map or this drawing one other time ago, if you don't mind. This is obviously, this is Charlotte Street, this is the new seven lane bridge, so I understand it, but it is a miracle. And uh, this is a drawing I showed you guys before. It's really essential uh, that this left turn stacking lane be put right here in front of the Bethany Church. Because every time someone turns left there, it jams up. We can't get rid of the traffic in Bridgeville. And, and this, this general plan, by the way, the task force has accepted, does more for east-west traffic in other words, Trevor St. Clair, Buffalo traffic, getting to and from the bridge right side of the I-79, that benefits us. And some of the features that you guys uh, please uh, make sure is in the design that the gateway is going. You've got to make sure that this radius on this turn is made more round and increase, increase so that it's easier for people coming down here to come into the bridge business district. This left turn stacking lane, you see those lanes are about 10 to 12 feet wide. That means that this curve has got to be moved over to that extent and it tapered down to zero to James Street. And, uh, excuse me, the other thing that I'd recommend is having, when they have the equipment there, they have the funding applications going to be made. We try to get all these three or four features done at the same time. The radius in front of the church should be increased as well because that's where the trucks can still not get around that turn. It's just nice to have to turn around. But my point is, uh, I, I stopped on to mention this to Lori uh, a couple weeks ago, and I told her that I would go down on Bend and B to see that these four features are put in, because if they aren't in when they build the bridge, you must well forget them. But they, they aren't going to come back two years or five years later and do it. Demand and stuff in there. Like, there might be a, a real estate issue <coughs> in terms of the turning lane, the left turning lane going up to the park here is about What do you mean? Right in front of the uh, Bethany Church. Yeah, yeah. Turning on Bethany Church. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You know that last two that yeah. the twelve office one, the church is frantic about not giving up long enough to be used for the link across the bridge. And I had the software engineer and myself met with one of the ministers nine months ago to tell them that's not the way it is. And, but eventually, eventually Pen dog, someone's going to put the left turn stack in there. And unless it's done as part of this overall plan, they are going to take that out of the front yard of that church because it'll be the cheapest way to do it. Since all of this stuff is going on now, just get a price on moving that over 12 feet to the figure of zero. And one other thing, uh, this might be, I, I don't know, I contacted the Economic Development Department of the if that's correct or not. One of the things that you might consider doing now, you guys made the Central Business District of Bridgeville look very attractive by putting the planters and the sidewalks and the trees and so on. And, and when the, all that stuff's blooming, it's very, uh, very attractive. You might, this, if they do this, it would be a good opportunity for you to extend those planters and the lighting of them down this way. That would give all the people that use this intersection that would give, give them a chance of you know, getting a rather spectacular view of the Virgin Central Business District. Uh, you have a copy of this one. Do you have another fact? Yeah, the CPI. Did, 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 did you talk to Abram or all about it? Well, you know, when we were, last time we were at Pendock, Pendock's, I mean, the ancestors made the commitment to move forward with the designer's project. So, we talked about the bridge primarily. Yeah, every, you know, even, right. All of it. Oh. Everything. Oh. Everything. Okay. So, you know, they made that commitment. They felt they had funding available to do that work. Right after the bike was passed. So, you know, we haven't received any feedback from them because they had to go up to offer RFPs, professional services. So, I mean, I don't think we'll see something here maybe by the end of the summer. At least maybe a kickoff meeting to meet with their formal design consultants for the project. But then we can bring that to the front their designers mm -hmm. will be incorporating our design but also the altered features. Right. So um, they are doing an RFP for that right now. So yeah. that's one thing uh, I, I, I did a very close I did the very close measurements on the post office thing. When you first look at it, it looks like the increase in radius would be a very costly or interfere with the steps going to the post office. It, it I'm not going to first say what you're saying. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, one last thing. Uh, excuse me. The last, uh, the last week, the last month, I was inquiring about the uh, spectacular the fire truck, the fire department had a wonderful thing. Um, I mentioned that I was talking to a couple of the experts with the manufacturer, and uh, I think Joe Colossi who asked me who they were. These are their names, and this is their names. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Proceed with it. So I think, and I think one thing that if, if we proceed with the project, 
we need to get 100% uh, participation of the property owners up there to give us an easement for that storm sewer so that you know, even, if, even though the storm sewer might be there and it might be an implied easement, I think it's better for us to make things right as we move forward from a legal standpoint. I'm going to turn to that. Any other, any other issue I think that was getting to as well is that the, the capacity of that is proven since you've done the clean out. Right. So, yeah, that happened in 2014. 13. 13. And since we've been cleaning and maintaining it, we've had some really hard storms and we've had nothing. So, um, you know, it'll be up to council to make a determination. Um, I think one of the things is that when something has never been maintained because we didn't know it was there, um, that's why the water was right. And then I think you know, I think one thing you know, you know where instead of maintenance, I think maintenance might might has to be something that's on a quarterly basis, and even after March storm events, and even in the fall, you might want to be up there, you know, looking at what the inlets look like uh, after the leaves fall, make sure there's no leaves in it to plug it up. So I mean, it's. Like Laura said, it's just kind of like out of unknowns that now we know about it, it's something we have to take care of. Is, is it true then that there's a bunch of bangs and dips and cracks? And there's some, I mean, look, uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you that. But, you know, the one thing there is when those storm sewers were installed years ago, they didn't have the technology and the laser beams to lay the pipes straight. So a lot of times, you know, they were digging down and they were putting in the pipes in the ground the best they could. So, there may be some deviations in it. We maybe had to pick up the pipe here or there because they encountered rock or something like that. So uh, I would, it's not a perfect system, but it, it functions. And in fact, you have it on your schedule, not your regular maintenance schedule, like the same area. Correct. There's a sanitary upgrade. Right, we have a doctor charge that comes in um, four times a year, and it's on that, it, it's on that schedule. And um, as I said, you know, Council can take a look at it and see, you know, what the options are. But we've been trying to maintain it, and there have been no issues. Nobody has reported anything to me, so um, but it's not on back burner. We understand your concern. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think I'm sure because that was put in before even Member St. Clair was there. So they're working on the runoff from Member St. Clair and everywhere else, and you know, that's why they, they can't handle the water. The runoff. What well, is handling water now? It's clean, though. It's over. Those, those developments were put in around the same areas. In fact, I think all. Does somebody else? Maris? If I remember right, Local Makers and Old Meadows were about the same time. In fact, I think Old Meadows was first. I don't remember. I don't know. I think you're right, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to say something about Bill Lucy and uh, Smith Yacht. It's going to be kind of hard to replace a guy like him, you know, Bob Bill. And uh, the other thing that I had on my mind was uh, I was coming down uh, Baldwin Street the other day, a little construction actually going on there. Police officer in the corner there during the traffic. And, uh, he wasn't paying very good attention but anyway. The car behind the front, the, there was a car there and there was a car behind him. He went around that car and it was a red light and he stood there and he just let it go. He didn't say nothing, he didn't do nothing. So I pointed it out to the officer and said, Hey, you just let the car go through a red light. And he told he, he told me to shut up. So I told, I told him, I said, well, if I wasn't from this town, I, that's the impression I would have the police around here. And I know better. I know that the police around here are good, good guys. I don't know whether he was having a bad day or he's missing a game that night, but you don't talk to anyone like that. You don't say shout out to anybody. I don't care who it is. The mayor, someone from out of town, fellow resident, you just don't do stuff like that. I would disagree. Sometimes we have to put people in their place. Well, <clears throat> and Joel, having dealt just... with you in the past, I know how you can be at times. Now, to further this a little more, 
we don't discuss personnel issues on public forum. If you have a problem with something one of my officers done, you come and see me well, about it. I didn't give you that. So I'm just telling you that if I said something to him in a derogative way, I would expect someone to say, shut up to me. But I said, hey, buddy. I mean, I'm just thinking there's an accident happening right there. You know how many lights, you know how many times people get hit there, right? Was he there directing traffic for the construction? He was there pressing buttons at the light. That's what he was doing. For the construction crew? Yes. Okay. And maybe there was a reason he let the car go through the He didn't let no car go through. He didn't even know the car was going through. I just thought you said a car went through it. The car went through it, but he he was standing there okay. unaware, to my belief. Okay. Now, his story might be different than mine. However, I mean, I'm just looking at it this way, Chad. You want to put me in my place, it's fine. If it's someone from out of town, that's the first impression you're getting from Bridgeville. I understand where you're coming you're from. You're the first one at the fence right there. Right. Not, not these people. You are. You represent us. That's just the way it is. But, and then one more thing, as far as the traffic coming down my road, it's worse than what they counted. And it's not local traffic. I can tell you everything now. I have to look, come out of my house in the morning. I mean, almost get hit. So I'm just saying, they either need to decrease that speed limit where, where they have the 50 mile an hour speed limit where the speed bumps are. People aren't following that, the speed limit for that. No. Um, and what's happening is, like, my house sits on the road. I bought that house. It's my house, okay. But the, the problem is the, the road is not wide enough right there for that speed limit. You can't have a car zipping by there 25, 30 miles an hour. Because 25 to somebody means, means 30. 15 means 20. So one thing I will comment on that is they have been closing that road a lot more lately closing the major connection a lot more. So you may get people who plan on coming down that way, turn around one that way and flying down the other way. Well, well, let me tell you another thing. 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, I hear big rigs coming down my street. Oh, yeah. I mean, real big rigs coming down my street. The bulldozers on it. And, yeah, it's yeah. every night. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not every night. Right? It's, it's it's pretty often. Like, it's really early in the morning or at night. I'm not so concerned about them coming up. I'm just concerned about them hitting my vehicle. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I think it's disturbing that there's signs up and there's a good faith agreement between the community so that stuff wasn't going to happen. From my experience, but I've seen them follow I, I know your guys' hands are tight. I understand. I'm just telling you, I'm just venting my concerns. That's all. And you can tell me to sit down. I agree. I'm just saying. I said my piece. Alright, um, I still love you, Chad. I love you too, Joel. <laughs> he told me you screamed at him. Uh, minutes. Motion of the Borough Council regarding the minutes of May 6, 2016. Special meeting has submitted. So we Get in the room. Do you check? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion of the Borough Council regarding the minutes of May 9, 2016, regular meeting as submitted. So moved. Second. Bill Henderson. Oh, Bill. Who's the guy we're getting in? Bill Henderson. Has it been fair? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 990. Motion of the Borough Council regarding the ordinance number 990. Ordinance of the Borough Council. Borough Council. Uh, ritual, amending the borough ritual code of ordinances, chapter 15, motor vehicles in traffic, part two, traffic regulations, 15-211.1, intersections established, uh, specifically to create a stop intersection for vehicles traveling in a northerly direction along Main Street, the Main Street intersects intersects Pesimentary Drive, and also to create a stop intersection with accept brake turns for vehicles traveling in a southeasterly direction along Main Street, where Main Street intersects Pesimentary Drive. The ordinances have been really advertised. So, 
Bill Henderson and Neil Lyons. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? I just have a comment to that. Chief, is, you, is that adequately posted up here? Do you, do you feel comfortable with what's up there? Two signs are posted together. Uh, we know there was, there was question whenever the first stop sign went up, which was the one coming from Upper St. Clair, you cross over the line, that that sign may be moved once they decided what they were doing with the, uh, the shrubbery and the landscaping that was up there. Because I think they put the sign temporarily on a telephone pole. So the only question would be we want to move that sign further back towards the border with St. Clair. But, you know, we would have to go up there and take a look at what, what type of line of view you would have if you're stopped closer to St. Clair. I don't know if you're going to be able to see up the Pesavento. So that was the only question that came up was the exact location of one side. I know before you came in, there was some feedback from some of the neighbors of new signs. There's been some post not obeying them. Can't do any. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, but so we're happy that this is kind of the day. So you're getting a <laughs> <laughs> we'll put Joel up there and can yell at everybody. We'll get that two hundred thousand off our right, uh, there. One thing you want. That motion did you have, by the way. All right. Uh, change order one: increase in quantity of fire hill road pavement restoration. Uh, motion of the borough council regarding change order number one: to change order for the pavement restoration of fire hill road with a quantity, quantity increase to the original bid of. Of five hundred square yards to nine hundred. 986.23 square yards due to increase in split and repair areas since the project was originally paid. Uh, meet the requirements of the 
going to the MS4. I mean, well, I'm, you get your argument. I understand what you're saying. True. Because now when somebody comes in that needs to do a small driveway or something that's relatively, so, I, think, I, 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 I don't know where 5,000 square feet sort of fits because under 5,000. It's a 70 foot square if that's an equal square. Uh, okay. And we really don't have And that's the earth, that's the disturbance area right now on the property. Right. So, I think, I think, the, the, I think Pat would, uh, you're not going to have some issues with driveways. And I think it would only be when someone wants to put an addition on your home mm -hmm. is where you can get more involved. You know, like it's likely that that happens. You know, we've had probably a handful of additions over the last few years. Not that big. I'm not that big. So, right. how many permits do we need to have the issue? What would they? How many referrals are we talking about? Not that big. And, and God, I'm sorry to you. And are we in a situation where? I mean, even, even the small number we're doing, we want to send the homeowners. Uh, well, we would do that. We would do that for them as far as just a review. And that would happen during the building process anyway, during all the other reviews. And like we said, it would have to be a pretty, a, a large addition or a large, larger development. And it's, yeah. after going through a four hour audit, with the, yes. which is online. Yeah on my report with the um, DEP um, and the MS4 obligations, um, it's going to get very complicated. And this is one thing that probably if they will be checking on that we are doing. And they're going to be checking on everything that we're doing. So. Yeah, and, and, I mean, there's many aspects of it, the agreement that help get our ticket punched, so to speak, on yes. many of these regulatory mm -hmm. sites. But mm -hmm. another thing we're talking about as far as the acre road program here, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, it doesn't change the substantive review, it doesn't change the suit the review there is. Mm -hmm. And this is not under stormwater management control, which are permanent purposes. The yes. this is the construction phase, ENS, mm -hmm. ENS enforcement, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, just to make sure they're doing things right. Some have gone either way on that. I mean, it's either you know, right. so locally it will be, you know, Joe and Lori, right? right. Uh, but if you check off the other blocks up until that amount. Mm -hmm. that, that's exactly what I was pointing out. You know, if we go with the other option, you would end up with the building inspector. I, I don't know who you talk to as well as the building inspectors. It would be a building inspector, John. Yeah, and it was, do they have the expertise in the. In the, in the smaller projects? Maybe the the smaller projects that you're going to have in the past are you know, basically probably some silt salt being put in. Yeah. That's about it. it you know, when, instead that we have another layer of checking and satisfying the requirements of the DPS, you know, so I think it's, it's advantageous to have them on board to help us. It, as, as you just said, Joe, it's another layer that you have. I understand that's another layer, that's, but it should, it, should, it should not complicate things uh, significantly for a small addition of all the <coughs> There is a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> a Washington Avenue sidewalk replacement area under Wheeling and Lake Erie Bridge and adjacent sidewalk. Motion of the Borough of Council authorizing engineer, engineer sites to prepare a certification for the Washington Avenue sidewalk replacement for the area under the Wheeling and Lake Erie Bridge and adjacent sidewalk in the railroad right of way and authorizing manager Collins to advertise the same. Uh, the total cost of the project estimate, estimated by engineer sites is $47,460. This includes both sides of Washington Avenue with the sidewalk located in the Wheeling and Lake Erie right over there. So, if they did want to help us with this, would you ever be against what we do to it? Oh, no. They don't care what we do to it. They just, um, they're just telling me that they will do nothing to it. And uh, as far as what we want to do, um, it, you know, it's fine. We've got to do the work. They're not going to come back to us and say we want this. <coughs> They just said that they have too, too many of these areas. Their um, staff is cut down. They don't have people to do it. They don't have the uh, 
just like it, 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 the same example as I've been saying things along the rear of Station Street there, where the lower ties and things have been left and that type of thing. They sent some people off, they cleaned up a little bit, I'm getting complaints again, they left things in the right of way. It's almost impossible to deal with them, but as far as us wanting to do something, they're all for that. Just like the trestle, us painting the trestle, us fixing the walls of the trestle, they're all for that too, but they say, you know, just... And in terms of sidewalk maintenance, that's kind of, you know, we have these old ordinances like everybody else that are doing chasing property and everybody else. The, the railroad right away is all over the country. And they are kind of different. You know, the letter they said, you can't make us do anything. Yeah. Well, and part of the reason behind that is because they're really easy to see the property ownership. And, and it's just like it sits there and it's nobody's property. In the meantime, you have people that are walking out onto the roadway in the dark, in the rain, and in the ice because the water lays there, so it's a dangerous situation. I mean, we could try to lean their property, we could try, we've cited them, and then we sent a citation to them as far as property maintenance goes, and we saw that we got back. Um, so, you know, if there's any avenue to try to get our money back later, but I think it's our responsibility. Right now, right now for our residents. Yeah. Is, is that, how often is that for inspection? Is it safe? It's safe. They actually um, re, just redid the decking um, about six months ago. So that's, and, and they did come, they put, if you notice, those little plastic uh, tops there to try to stop some of the water. Mm -hmm. But I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I stood down there with them and you know, we took a look at it and stood in the water and pretty much said Did you get a socks wet? Hopefully you get a socks wet. It's all pinned on. And you know, pinned on some of the sidewalk in the road right away. So Does it slide in the pinned on? Yeah, it does. It does. But they they've already you know. They actually were going to help us. Yes, if we had an ADA compliant project with the Washington Avenue um, uh, reconstruction, but because all of our sidewalks were already done and they were already ADA compliant, they were going to try to put that on the back end of it and help us. But then there's nothing ADA compliant that they have to do up there. So then they said, you know what, we can't help you with it. So I was hopeful all last year that they were going to come in and help at the 12th hour, there's no ADA project, so it's going to be so good. Yes, sir. Um, um, I'd like to, over some period of time, have your legal opinion regarding what the PUC with this, public facility commission. I don't know if this is a maintenance issue that the PUC may have oversight over, um, I'm not expecting you to have an answer this evening. I'm not going to be putting it on the table, but I would like to take a look at it over the next couple of weeks. Just, um, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. I'm talking about it. That's fine. Um, sure. the, uh, the second item regarding the scope of the project, uh, the, there is a, a, a very, there's an area where there's no sidewalk left at all. Okay? Um, and then there's an area where the sidewalk is in disrepair. I don't know how, I, I can't in my mind's eye figure out how far back this, this scope, scope is. is. From, from, if, you're, if you're coming from Great Southern Shopping mm -hmm. Center and you're driving toward us, okay, mm -hmm. we started the railroad trestle on the right hand side because the, the property owner actually fixed his sidewalk right. to that. So it, it's all of that under there, oh, and then all up uh, in front of our welches, because okay. that's all railroad. All the way to the old borough building? Uh, yes. So yes. the old borough building, it stops not, there. It stops there. I think it's okay, on the other side, mm -hmm. it's the trestle mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and then you come through, and the entrance of DNC Supply, mm -hmm. all of their signs, everything, that's all railroad right mm -hmm. So it stops at the, it used to be the old E and A or E and A. Yeah, okay. It, it stops there on that side.
So would you go in front of the old, what you're saying, is the nature of the in front of the it's Yeah, we're stuck. It's, it's right it's stopped, um, <coughs> the DNC supply entrance, uh -huh. that's where, that's right, that's where right, 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 right. it stops at the entrance there. So it stops before the entrance, because the entrance is open every time. Has it? Oh, you know what? They just did the um, they just did the water. They, they, they did the store there. They they, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So that it'll, yeah. it'll stop right there. The rest is fleet depots going in. Right. Here. Here's my my thought: is that I don't know how much each side is, but it's the Don Wall. It's the uh, it's the Don Wall side, and not in front of his property. But it's really a difficult area. Yeah. It seems fairly clear that this community is going to pay for this. We might fight. We'll, yes, it's yes, too bad, so we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> we might fight. Yes, you told no, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that if council wants to do it, yeah. and clearly you're looking for the railroad to participate, but, but the odds of them with a solicitor McDermott can come up with something brilliant. Really that's what we said at the last month's meeting. Yeah. She was going to formally what I, cite down and then we got the Larry said. Yeah. Okay. So, what my thought is, that maybe just doing the one side might be sufficient. No. Go ahead, Phil. Why don't we take a ride up to the DOT place up there, or behind the high school, approach someone up there from the Department of Transportation, Pennsylvania, see if they can get us in touch with someone who's on a committee in Washington, D.C., representative, and see if they can come on and take a look at it. Because if we put pressure on them that way, they're going to say, this shouldn't be like that. No, because, no, if you go up there and get in their face, they're going to do something about it. Just tell them. I mean, just get on the phone. Call me. We could actually get, you know, have the state representative to try, try to help us retrieve something, but the question right now is how long can we go to leave it in? Yeah, that's I am to be very clear, I am entirely supportive of the borough taking this action and repairing the sidewalk. I am supportive of that. Yeah, and then okay. trying to Don't want to try to get it back. Um anybody make a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Bill list, uh, motion to the borough council regarding the June 2016 bill list. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payrolls, motion to the borough council approved the payrolls June 17, 24, July 1, 24, and 8, 24, July 1, 2016. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due to the May 2016 real estate tax collector report. Joe Ricci. So, and we've got a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the April 2016 financial report. Joe Ricci. So, and we've got a Ricci. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? No report for the police. And a motion to accept the May 2016 zoning. So moved. Bill Henderson and Joe All those in favor? Aye. All those in favor?
register and then retreat. We can do that in the next couple of weeks, so we can move forward with that. Safety, Bill Henderson. Uh, yeah, one thing like um, Fire Chief Julio and I were reviewing some of the fire hydrants around town, and uh, he brought it to my attention. There are a couple that are obscured by shrubbery and, and would make it very difficult. They're not visible. Yeah, they're, they're very hard. They're literally not visible. So, what we'd like, I don't even know if we have any on the books. One of them is at the bottom of the foliage of the property there. And uh, one's up in Pennsylvania Avenue. I don't know if I'm at Pennsylvania and I forget the house number on the bottom. It's actually on the bottom, but it's right across the pole. So I'm thinking if we could send a letter out to those property owners. And, and some of the other, we've talked, some of the other communities have like a three foot radius around, so I'm not sure if that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. If there's, uh, if there isn't something, I'd like to send a letter to the residents to see if they're cooperating with us. Yes. So, bottom of Village, 146 Pennsylvania? Yes. Yeah, that's those, those are, do you have a where they all are? Those are the only two. Okay. Everything else is really good enough. All right. That's it. Thanks. 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 Th
Um, in Hawthorne Park, as I said earlier, we're still waiting for the uh, DCNR to uh, get the money from the Land and Water Conservation Fund from the National Park Service. That probably won't come until the fall, so I'm anticipating a fall design and bidding so we can have a spring 2017 start. And then uh, the, the task force, as I said before, uh, PennDOT is uh, about the funding there to start the design work. We're still waiting for the final funding for the construction. So hopefully by, I'd say September, hopefully we'll have a consultant online to uh, get the design moving. That's all I can do. Thank you very much. A couple of questions for the engineer. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, also for on Barrett Hill Road, are you planning on putting some bolt, some bolt patch in there to fix the bumps that we've got? And then are you plus a couple of bolts? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put some bolt patch in Yeah, they've been trying to watch it, so I, I wasn't down um, since the weekend, so if there are some areas, I'll let them know. No, it's not anything in particular, just wanted to make sure yeah. that yes. that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. The broader issue here is that the I see with Barrow Hill Road is the same one we've seen for a year and a half now. Um, the road is deteriorating. Uh, Joe, the, the explanation of the water, you know, water damage or water conducting it is Seems reasonable, but there's not a great deal of evidence to support that. Well, I think you know, get that, you know, the, the winter of 2014-15, uh, we had a good bit of water come down in there and, and cause damage to the road. So we've anticipated that for the future. We've got an undertrain that's going to go on both sides of the road, tie back into the inlets to capture any of subsurface water. We've got a good cross section going in there with some heavy number four stones choked in with some fines to uh, support the weight of the, of the traffic that travels on Bauer Road. So I think we're uh, pretty well covered on addressing the, uh, the repair. I'm, I'm following. Let's remember that this was done approximately four years ago. But keep in mind, when we had the work done, we built resurfaced the road, we did not have a water problem. Okay? Something has happened. Something happened. Okay? I don't know what it is unless you want to spend thousands of dollars to the geotechnical investigation as to where these water is coming from. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm putting on the table. Yeah. We're going to spend $120,000 to repair it again. We repaired it four or five years ago. We're going to spend $120,000 to repair it again. We don't know why it's failed. Or why, why it failed. I, I, and, I, and I appreciate your your, your straightforwardness on this show, and it, it may be worthwhile to consider spending thousands of dollars, even tens of thousands of dollars, to make sure you have a cost to figure out. I mean, we look and try to we probably spend twenty five to thirty thousand dollars just to, to, to drill it to figure out where it's going. It's still not right. And one of the suggestions was instead of drilling it, you know, take a backhoe down there, scoop down, and see what you can see what you've got, and then re hole patch it. Now, I, you know, I bring this up at this meeting because you're trying to schedule this for September, is what you're projecting. Or sooner. Or, or, or sooner. That's, so there's not much time if council, if for the engineer or council, to really take a look and determine what the cause is. Now, you know, if everybody thinks, if we figured it out, fine. But it's called overweight vehicles that go on there. Kind of for years, there were overweight vehicles. There's not much that's changed in the pattern of that road. The road deteriorated over a number of years, was repaved for you know approximately three or four years ago. It's deteriorating very quickly, considering. And if it is the amount of traffic draw, if it is every overweight vehicle, then we better address that issue because they're not changing. Those same vehicles are going to be coming for the next three years, and I don't know that we want to spend $120,000 every three or four years to redo Bower Hill Road. But just, I'm putting it out there for everyone to think about it. It's, you know, I don't think that there's any kind of emotion that you can do at this point, but I am putting it out for both the council and the engineer to think about it. So, um, so, yeah, so thank you. Anything else? No, thank you. Fire Chief Ochilio. 
Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, not much other than we will see everybody at Community Day and down at the fire department for the concert we have going on that night. Uh, the only thing is, uh, this past weekend we participated in a drill with Mount Lebanon and North Strabane at one of our high rises, uh, learning new techniques for high rise fires and newer stuff that's out. So it was uh, very interesting. I was up there with it. And then, other than we've been I'm sure everybody has seen a lot of departments are really using our house and are really greatly appreciative of getting the chance to really train in there and do things. So it's, they, uh, they do want me to extend a thank you to all you up there for giving us the okay to do that. It's been very positive. That's all I got. What's that? The dogs were back last week. Yeah, and the canines, the police have been using it too. I mean, so it's really very fortunate we don't get to do that that often. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. Uh, Dan's not here from Southbridge. Uh, Becky's not here from the library. Um, I provided a report. Does anyone have any questions?